Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Today I want to talk to you about why and uh, I want to look at a, a portion of scripture. I think we're very familiar with it, but it's in Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 8. Philippians 2 uh, verses 5 through 8. So if you could find that, we, we want to read together out loud. We want, to, we want to hear the word of God, amen, and we want to live the word of God. But faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So we need the Word of God for anything to happen in our life. The power to change your life is in the Word. Amen? The, the Word is what gives us the truth that we need for our life. Amen? And uh, I'm super excited about this scripture. So if you have it, we'll read together. Um, uh, are you ready? Everybody ready? Maybe we could all stand if you're ready. That way I know you got it. And then we'll, we'll read from our from our gut, right? We'll push some air through there and get some, get some volume going. And uh, uh, on the count of three, ready? One, two, three, go. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the, in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you open up our eyes, our ears, our mind, especially our heart, that we would see, hear, know, and understand something new from the Word of God today in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat. And... Uh, uh, I, I, want, I want to give you my sermon title. It's Why Me? Why Me? <laughs> I think we're all guilty at some point in our life of asking, you know, why me? Why, it's a, that's a good question, right? And uh, I was excited about this question uh, t uh, this week. And uh, just as part of my study time, I, I had my phone sitting there. So I asked Siri, I said, Siri, why? And uh, I don't know if you've ever done that, but I did that. And she came back to me and said, well, at least my Siri is a, has a female voice. I don't know, yours might have a guy's voice. Joanne has some British guy talking to her. And uh, <laughs> you guys may, may or may not, I mean, you can select whatever you want Siri to call you or whatever you want, but she can never understand what she's going to say because sometimes she, she's just very confusing. And she said this to me. She said, that is a fascinating question. And I, I, as, I, as I pondered on that, those few words of wisdom, from Siri, okay? I, I was thinking to myself that she was absolutely right. That is a fascinating question because often in life, we don't, we'll, we'll never know why, okay? And yet we spend much of our time caught up in the concept of trying to understand why. It's like, why am I alive? <laughs> I, I, have, I have gone through my entire life wondering that same thing. Why am I alive? What is the purpose? What is the meaning? Why, why, have I, why have I been born? Why was I born so good looking? Why was I born to grow up to and be who I am? Why did I have to have the kids I had? Why did I get married to the wife I got married to? Why did, why did, why did, why did? And we can all say it, okay? I'm just giving you some few things there, but why, why? I wrote this down. Why equals this? Why equals this? My perspective of my perception that's what why is. It's my, my perception of my perspective. Okay? Because as many of us as in this room, as many of us as in the world, we all have different perspectives on whatever it is that we're talking about. Right? And, and God bless you. You all have the right to have your perspective. Amen? <laughs> but some of us this morning must come to a place like Jesus where we're willing to humble ourselves and become obedient, amen? Just like Jesus did. Because I, I can't ask you to be obedient if I'm not being obedient, amen? I can't ask you uh, to come to a place of obedience if I refuse, amen, in my own life to be obedient, amen? I, uh, I want to give you the first word today. It's mind, okay? Mind. Uh, my mind is simply made up of my mindset, uh, hashtag my lifestyle, hashtag 
let go, hashtag I'm free, okay? We need to come to a place where we're free of our mindset, amen? Free of whatever it is that has, we have focused on or fixated on in our life, amen? Uh, to change my mind, I need a new mindset, amen? I need, uh, have you ever been, uh, uh, sometimes we go out to eat and we get this, well, most of the time we go out to eat, uh, but you go out to eat and we ever get a, like a shake or a smoothie or something that's really cold and you start to drink it, right? You just go, this is so good. And you keep doing too much and pretty soon you get this thing called a, it's called a brain freeze and other people call it other things, but I call it a brain freeze. It's like you, you simply have to stop drinking whatever it is you're drinking that's cold and you have to stop and you have to think about it for a second and you go, I wonder if this is ever going to get over because it's like, ah, you know, and it's like it's, it's a brain freeze. And sometimes I think <laughs> as, 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 as simple as this might sound, uh, we just need to stop some things. Amen. Some things we think about sometimes to, to change our mindset. We got to stop thinking about it. OK, and, and it's, it's easy to say, but it's hard to do in your life. It's hard to do in my life. I, I know in my life I've had uh, many opportunities to stop thinking about things I think about all the time, but. I just seem to go right back there, you know? And, and the reason I keep going right back there is because I was created to, to be who I am, right? And it's an excuse. And I, I know people that, that say, that's just who I am. I'll never change. I'm always going to be this way. That's just who I am. And, and that's not a, that's not, that is true, but it's not a truth, okay? It's what we find in the Word of God. The Word of God changes me, Amen. Uh, Paul talks about that in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 through 15. He says, Brethren, I count my, not myself to have apprehended. Uh, there's, there's that colon there. And uh, actually, in the, in the verses that are of our context of our, our, our text this morning, there were three colons in there. And uh, I, I found it interesting in the, in the colons, uh, uh, that just in that, that punctuation mark, I found that each colon built on the other colon in, that, in, this, in, this, uh, uh, con in the context of our, of our text this morning. And I, I, I thought it was interesting that uh, one decision will lead to another decision and another decision will lead to another decision. And, and as we layer up on things in our life, as our life, as we get older in life, as we move on in life, things layer up. Decision will layer upon decision, will layer upon a decision, will layer upon decision. And Paul is talking about that. Said He says, I, I'm trying to apprehend something. I'm trying to get somewhere. He says, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. I love, I love the concept of forgetting things which are back there. But I'm going to tell you, I have lived 50, almost 53 years, and there are things that I just can't forget. Amen? There's things I can't, I can't forget. And, and, it's, and Apostle Paul is saying, I'm with you. I'm with you. I understand that. I'm trying to apprehend that. I'm trying to get to that level. Amen? I'm trying to step up to a level where every day when you come into the church, I don't have to look at you and think about the same thing. That's the same person every day. See, see, if I could get to that level where I could love you with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul, my spirit, and love you just like I love myself, if I could get to that place in my life, in my walk with God, what would happen in this place? Amen? And see, that's what God is wanting to do with us. He's wanting to take us to another level. He's wanting to take us outside of our comfort zone, outside of whatever camp you've built for your life, amen? In your mind, between your ears, the thing that you think about and fixate on so often in your life, the why in your life, the, the struggle with the why, amen? The struggle with the why. So, but, but I, forgetting those, reaching forth unto those things which are before, see? I think, I think Paul's got to, he's on to something there because he says, he says, what is before me is greater than what's behind me. And if I never let go of what's behind me, I'll never experience the greatness of something new in my life. Amen. And I want something new in my life today. I want something new. He says, I press toward the mark, the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect. Perfect. See, I don't know. I, I, looked, I looked at myself this morning in the mirror and I seen that I was perfect. Amen? But you know what? You may not see perfection this morning in me. You may not see perfection in you, but Jesus is perfect for me. Amen? He's the deliverer. He's the truth. He's the way, the truth, and life. He's the one who makes me perfect. Amen? I am perfect in Him. Amen? And <laughs> how many moments, I, I said this on uh, Thursday night, uh, how many moments of your life have you jumped over to get to this moment to jump past this moment, to get to another moment that you're just going to jump by. And you're never going to ever get to a place 
where you can say, I enjoy this moment. See, because your life is moments. It's a moment. And you can't jump over every moment of your life expecting the next moment to be better when this moment stinks. Because I'm so bound up with something I can't change anyways. I'm so bound up in a why. A why that is all over and done with. A why who is who has made me who I am today. Are you paying attention? Are you paying attention to what God is saying to you? I speak this by the Spirit of God this morning. Are you paying attention in this moment? Is this moment going to change your next moment? I want to ask you that. Is it going to change your next moment? Are you going to still be the same way next week, next month? next year, five years from now, what is going to change your mind this morning? <laughs> I don't know about you, but wasting time is not a priority in my life. I am not into wasting time. Matter of fact, I understand uh, by the grace of God that I, it is, I stand in front of you this morning. Many things could have happened. I, I stood underneath of a, a machine one time, uh, 130 some 5,000 pounds, I think, I sat underneath of it looking up at it for around four hours, not knowing if I was gonna, if it was gonna fall or if it was gonna go up, because one way or another it was, something was gonna happen. And I stood there and I, I remember that was a, a pivotal moment in my life because I, I thought that my life might be over. And I, I, I was thinking about all of the things I could have done and should have done and might have done and maybe could have done better, like maybe I could have been a better father, maybe I could have spent more time with, with my kids and my children. Maybe I could have spent less time chasing after success and money and fame and fortune and I could have spent more time on my knees in my prayer closet trying to, trying to further the kingdom of God, trying to show somebody else the love of God that I have experienced in my life. And I said to myself, I wasn't afraid to die because I think dying is the easy thing. Amen? Living is the hard thing. Really living is the hard thing this morning because that's why Jesus died for me so that I could truly live and truly experience the grace of God, truly walk out a life that is absent from a past that might be disgraceful. It doesn't matter what happened back there. What matters is what I choose right now. Amen? Is God glorified in my life now? See, if He is glorified here and now, then I am not wasting my time. I'm tired of wasting time this morning. I'm tired of going, going home and reading and, and not getting anywhere, not growing, not becoming somebody I'm not. Before, I want you next week when you come in to see a different pastor, amen? Someone who has grown, someone who has spent time with God every single day, who had prayed for you and worship for you when you don't know how to worship and ask God to come and inhabit this, this sanctuary in these walls and, and to when you step through the door that there would be no boundaries between you and God and God could come and visit you and change your life and, and somehow change your mind. Amen? Because your mind needs to be changed this morning. I'm tired of wasting time. See, I think sometimes we got to decide, are we going to sit on the porch like a little dog? Or are we going to be the big dog and come off the porch and get off of the little thing that stuck, you're stuck on and move forward? we got to come to a place where we understand that Jesus is my why. He is my why. He's the reason I get up and stand up in front of you and preach a message from my heart. He's the reason. Not for the season on Christmas only. He's, there, he's not only on Easter. I don't come to church on Easter to see Him only. I come every single day into the presence of God and I desire Him to move. Amen? To move me. Not you, me. If I move, you will move. Otherwise, you'll be out of my life. It's true. You can, you can go or you can stay. But if you want to go, that's fine. I can't hold you back. But I want you to stay. I want you to grow. I want you to change. <sighs> I'm supposed to be alive and living a victorious a life. A victorious life. All emotions aside. All emotions aside. Love is not an emotion. It's a, it's a choice. <sighs> Just like the choice that I make to stay where I'm staying. Amen. 
I make a choice every night to come home or not to come home. Amen? I mean, Joanne tells me to come home, but <laughs> I, I make a choice. I make a choice to drive the car home. I make the choice to get up in the morning and go to work. I make a choice when I go to bed and when I sleep and when I, what I do with my day. What I, what I look at with my eyes. What I hear in my ears is the choice that I make. Those are all choices I make. I make all those choices based on something. It's a why this morning. <laughs> I'm 20% sure I'm going to make it. I'm 20% sure. I'm not, I'm not fully sure. See, that's the way we live our life. It's like, if I can, I don't know. Because we get stuck. We get stuck. We get, we get held back because we don't want to move. We're set. Mind set. Mind set. I'm just 20% sure I'll make it. That's why I'm living out what I believe. I'm living out what I believe. You see? I'm living out what I believe. Do I believe God is able? I'll live it out. Do I believe God is, God is the healer? I'll live it out. <laughs> Amen? Hmm? How would you like to be God this morning when we come to Him in prayer? And we say, God, I ask that you provide for me. I ask that you do this. Because you know, my hope is in Jesus. And God knows you're lying because He knows what you're thinking about. <laughs> my, my hope is in you, Jesus. My victory is in Jesus. And we're thinking something totally opposite. Because we're, we're thinking that if God would give us this thing, then we would be happy. Then if I had this in my life, I'd have the victory. If I had this, you know, if I just had a, a beautiful, gorgeous wife, a beautiful, gorgeous husband, a million dollars in the bank account, nice car, nice motorcycle, nice job, someone who appreciated what I did at work every day for eight hours, somebody just would appreciate me. Because see, all of those things I do because of Jesus. Amen? Amen. I'm, my mind is set on a situation, a situation, or on Jesus. Hate it or love it. I like that show. They had that show, <laughs> Love It or List It. And then they had people come in and they, they, uh, they, the one guy's a realtor and the other guy's person is a, is a remodeler, you know? And, and they go and they, they fix up a house and, and they, they challenge one another and they have this like little uh, camaraderie or, or war, if you would, or a little battle between uh, the, the, the love it or the list it. You know, they're going to keep it or you're going to sell it, you know? And then the one guy goes and shows them all these other new things, trying to get them to entice them to buy something new. And the other one spends all kind of time remodeling their house and making, and they, they go through struggles because they have too, not enough money usually and they, and they can, can't have everything they want, but they can have some of what they want. And, and they get to the end of the show and they stand in front of them and they say this, love it or list it. Uh, that's a good tag right there, but love it or list it, okay? And, and it's true in our life because there's stuff in our life, I don't care how much remodeling you do, that it's always going to be the same. It's just always going to be there. And i got to understand, it's not going to change. But are you going to love Jesus or are you going to leave him? See, is Jesus getting them, that relationship getting better? Am I getting better? Am I growing? Is he remodeling in your life today? Is he remodeling your life? Is he remodeling your mind? Is he remodeling what you think about? Is, is he convicting you this morning? Is he bringing you to a place this morning where you are going to be changed? Are you challenged to be changed this morning? Luke 14, 26 and 27 says, if any man come to me, and I love, I love this verse, because it says, hate not your father, <laughs> hate, and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciplined person. He cannot be the person who is going to follow after me because he's got all these other things in front of him, uh, in front of my relationship, because Jesus wants to be the first. Actually, it says in another place, he says he wants to be the first. He's not happy if he's not first. Jesus is the first, firstborn from the dead, only begotten son, the first son of the living God, and, and he's uh, got to be first in my life. He's got to be my priority in my life. He's got to be my mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I need to have the mind of Christ, amen? The same mind needs to dwell in me. Uh, 
We want, to, we want to be the disciple of the living God. That's what we really want. We want to be a disciple. We want to be known as the disciple, the one that God used, amen? The one that everybody can see. Say, God used him. God used her. God used them in that situation. And we want to be that person, but we can't be that person and love the world. We can't. You can't, can't have both things, okay? We, we used to say it all the time, oil and water, they just don't mix. You can shake it all up, and it might look like it's mixed, but just give it a minute, and you'll see the difference. We love things more than God. That's the truth. We love people more than God. We love, we love, we love. But do we love God? Amen? We want grace without the sacrifice. We want mercy without the change. God has placed His love inside of us. He's just waiting for His love to just trickle out of your life. And the way His love trickles out of your life I'm sorry to say, is through pressure when he squeezes it out. Amen? The pressure is what squeezes out the love of God in my life. <laughs> it's the, the argument. It's the, the, the speeding ticket. <laughs> it's the, it's the, it's the, the wife. He, he has allowed the squeeze in your life to push it out. Amen? So I set my mind right now that come hell or high water, I'm going to serve the Lord. I, that would be a perfect opportunity for all of us men to stand up and say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, Because most of the time whenever someone stands up and says that, they say it out of pride. They stand in a position of pride saying, I'm the boss. And what I say goes. But it's important to understand that love does not manip God does not manipulate his love out of your life. He does not manipulate your obedience. He does not manipulate ever. He says, please, I love you. And he waits for our response this morning. Amen. He's put his love inside of you. He's waiting for it to trickle out. He, he's allowed the squeeze for to push to push out his love. As for me and my house, right? In truth. As for me and my house, if I could just look in the mirror this morning, as for me in my house, what's inside of my house, my mind, what's going on in my mind, I give that to God this morning, right? Let me give you an affirmation. My mind is steady. My heart is secure. Woo! That's a tough one right there. My heart is secure. Are you serious? I can give my heart to Jesus and never have to worry again about him ever leaving me or forsaking me because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's, my heart is secure in him, amen? My hope is above. My joy is full. <laughs> Woo, if I could just jump up and down right there because my joy is full. Come on, if I got Jesus in my life, my joy is full. It's full. I should have full, not an empty gas tank of joy. Full, full joy. Full joy is available. I'm full of joy this morning. Amen? And sometimes we got to remind ourselves that we are full of joy. If Jesus is in me, I have joy. Amen? There ain't no devil in hell. There ain't no devil that could walk in this room today and steal your joy. You have to give it to him. He's trying, he's trying to take it from you. I preached it on Thursday about, about how the devil comes to rob us of joy. He comes to rob us of things. He's, it says... He, he came to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to steal first, right? Kill and destroy. He wants to steal your joy. That's the first thing he's going to take from you. And, it, and if you see your joy slipping, you better slip back and say, Jesus, restore unto me the joy of my salvation like David said. Amen? Stand up and say, you know what, devil? You don't have right to my joy. Amen? You don't have right in my house. Amen? You don't have right to come and steal something from me. You, you, you tell him, say, you know what, devil? Get out. Get out of my mind. Get out of my heart. Get out of my work. Get out of my finances. Get out of my relationships. Get out of everything. You don't have any right to be here. Amen? You're, you're a thief and a robber, and I have, I have seen you. I see you. I see you right here and right now, and I say, get out in Jesus' name. Begin to stand up, and don't allow him to steal something that's yours. Amen? Don't allow him. Ooh, that's good. That's good preaching right there. I just dropped the mic. Let me give you another word. Death. (sighs) 
Hashtag, will the real love stand up? For significant change to happen, I'm bringing it down for you, for significant change to happen in your life and to finally occur, you need to understand something very important. Something is going to have to die. My idea, my solution, are the number one problem in my life. You know, <laughs> in, in marriage counseling, I always say this, and, and I do it to get a laugh. I say this. I say, I say, uh, <laughs> True love always asks you to give up something, right? And in marriage, the, the wife gives up her name. She gives up her name. She gives up her name. But the truth of it is, true love will always ask you to give up something. And it always asks you to give up, really true love asks you to give up your life. Your perception of what my life was before I met you See, that's what I did when I married Joanne. I, I said to her, I said, I said, whatever it is that I was going to do is now changed because I'm going to be with you. And sometimes that's, that sounds romantic right there, and I get a tear when I think about that. But sometimes that's been really hard. It's been very difficult for her, okay? Because she had to live with me every day. Can you imagine living with a preacher who all he does is preach to you all the time? And, and she says, I heard that before. And she's like, stop preaching to me all the time. And I, I just want to have a conversation with you. I don't want to hear a sermon. I don't want to hear about the Bible right now. I want to hear about something like the color of my eyes is blue and whatever. And, and so the struggle is real in relationships, okay, with others, come on, examine your relationships with others. I mean, maybe you're not married, but look at somebody else in your life and say, how have I been honestly in this relationship? Most relationships, they really aren't, they're all one-sided because we're always trying to get something for us out of them and they're trying to get something for them. I'm hiding behind the pulpit right now, just so you know. <laughs> because I'm afraid maybe you're going to throw a rotten egg at me. But, but I'm going to tell you, examine your relationships. And then shift your perspective to God. Think about Him. Think about your relationship with Him. What is it that you have made that into? Okay? Oh, that's, that's good preaching, Pastor. Robert. The wife gives up her name. The wife gives up her name. In a marriage, the wife, did you know who you are? You, my brothers and sisters, are the bride of Christ. You are supposed to give up your name. <laughs> you're supposed to give up something. See, you're supposed to give up your name. It's not, it's not your will or your desire anymore because he, Jesus is our husband. I give up my name. I give up my right to be what I was going to be now. It's up to him to lead and guide and direct my life. Jesus is my why this morning. I found this great verse. I actually, I have watched, I've looked at this verse for a long time and I, I, I just think it has a little more meaning than what I've always read it as. And it's Psalms 116, verse 15. It says, it's pretty easy, 116, 15. It says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. And I always thought, well, that'd be awesome, right? It's like when I go, <laughs> and they, they lay me in front up here, people walk in, it'd be a precious thing. Everybody'd be like, woo, he finally passed on. <laughs> I don't have to hear that voice anymore. I don't have to hear him preach anymore. I don't have to hear all that. And I thought about how awesome it's going to be for me, when I do end up dying, how awesome it's going to be when I can be in the presence of the Lord. How, how wonderful it will be for me. But I thought about something else. 
I thought about something else. I said, I said, <laughs> what is the testimony that I will leave? This life I now live should bring glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. Shouldn't I give glory to Him? Shouldn't my life demonstrate faith over fear? Shouldn't my life demonstrate I lived my life without compromise of the Word of God, of the relationship that I have with the Word? Shouldn't my life demonstrate what is in me came out of me? What, what Christ died and put in me comes out of me to others? Shouldn't my life be a testimony of the power and majesty of God? Shouldn't I, shouldn't I be precious in His sight here and now in our relationships? It's funny how our relationship with God is with a condition <laughs> that I impose on Him and His relationship with us or with me is without condition. Isn't it funny that I'll serve you, God, if for because He's without condition. I should be without condition. Whether I get this or that or the other thing doesn't matter because I have a relationship with the one who has tomorrow in mind. He knows what I need then. He, knew, he knows what happened then and He knows what I need then. In this moment, I say that all the time, in this moment I will serve Him. In this moment He will be my why. i got to read a bunch of verses for you. And I, I know it's long, but I, I have to. Uh, Romans 11, 32 through 36. 11, 32 through 36. And I'm just going to read them. I'll try not to stop. I, I probably will a couple times, but I'm going to try not to stop. So it says in 11, 32, Romans 11, 32. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief. There's a comma there, so I paused. Pastor Everett, put your name. All, all. We've all guilty of unbelief. That he might have mercy upon all. <laughs> like those two alls. It's like the, the, the bookends, right? It's all in all. It's like all of us need the mercy of God. All of us have been in unbelief and sometimes still are. Amen? In certain little areas. And God is trying to dig us out of those little areas and ask you to step out of it. And then it goes on in verse 3, it says, oh the, oh, the depth, I'm trying not to preach, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable. Did you see that, did you see that exclamation point there after God? It said, it, said, it said, let me read it right. Oh, the depths and riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. But who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath given to him? And it shall not, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. And my favorite verse, remember my favorite verse? For of him and to him, oh, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. If I had that verse up there right now, I would stop and I would show you the amen says that I agree that he is going to get glory in my life because I understand everything flows from him, back to him, 
and through him in my life. And I can trust that wherever it is he's taking me, wherever I've been in my past, he's going to do something powerful in my life because he only does good things in me. Amen? He only does good in me. Amen? I was, I was at the, the chiropractor. It was uh, uh, today. It's 15 week, weeks. I, I hurt my back 15 weeks ago. And I, uh, I actually, the, a, lot of, a lot of people thought that I would need surgery and they thought there was going to be a lot of stuff going on and they didn't think I could heal and all of this stuff went on. Well, two weeks ago on a Sunday morning, I was preaching a message and, and you can go back and look, but between thoughts, there's a transition between thoughts and power. Right in the middle of that trans transition, I, I even said it to, to all of you. I said, I feel like I can rip this pulpit in half. That's why I said, and I feel like I could, I told you about the story how I could rip phone books and stuff when I was younger, and I probably still can, but, and then sometimes I'd rip my shirt, no, I didn't, I never did that, but the, the thing is, is that I told you about that, tra in that transition, I felt the power of God come and touch my life. My, it healed my back, my back is, is healed, amen? I felt the power of God come, okay? And just touch me. I don't remember anybody laying hands on me. People did lay hands on me, but that moment, nobody laid hands on me. God himself, reach down and touch me. Amen? And I'm going to tell you right now, today, I stand before you. I, don't have, I haven't taken no painkillers. I haven't taken nothing. And I'm going to tell you, I don't have any pain at all. I'm standing up straight this morning. Amen? Because God has set me free from the pain and the injury, whatever went on, it's free. I'm done. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to tell you, we got to get excited about the power of God wants to touch your life. If he did it for me, he will do it for you. Amen? And he'll do it for others. <laughs> See, <laughs> it's going to make me cry. I'm sorry. But if I would get out of my mindset and realize that there's another person in my life, okay, that needs the answer to their life, amen? If they could see it in me, what... <laughs> They could, if they could just see it in me, if I could just have a testimony this morning that would say, you know what? God is greater than a back injury, amen? God is greater than my past. God is greater than my future. And in this moment, this moment alone, I don't know why. I don't need to know why anymore. I just need to trust Him because I know He did it before and He'll do it again. I don't understand it. I don't have to. I'm not a doctor. I don't know what happens to backs and, and ligaments and nerves and how they go through the body and all that, but you know who created the body? God did. In the beginning, God. It was God's idea for us to be here in this moment. It was His providence in our life that brought us to these chairs. So I walked in the chiropractor's office and she, she didn't even, I just walked in and I was standing there because I always stand there because I can't sit because <laughs> that's too much pain. So I was just standing there. So I was just standing like I always did. And I was standing there and she walks in and she walks right up to me and she says, she stands like right there. And she says, she says, uh, Pastor, oh, she didn't say Pastor Everett. She just said, uh, I think it's time that you go get an MRI. And I said, I'm better though. And I explained to her what happened. I said, I was, I was preaching and I felt the power of God come in and my back is better. It's, I, I, don't, I can't explain it to you. I didn't do an exercise. I didn't, it didn't crack. It didn't do nothing. Nothing happened. I said, I just explained to her and she said to me, and I said, do you believe it? And she said to me, she, she went like this, Whoa. oh, that's weird. And she turned and she went over and got the chart and she started looking and she said, she counted the days back and she said, this is when you was hurt, and this is why I was instructing you that it's time. And, 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 she, and I said to her, I said, but do you believe that God healed me? And she said, most chiropractors believe in God. She said, our core belief, this is our core belief, she said. She said, our core belief is this, up, down, inside, out. And I thought, maybe she is a Christian. Because God needs to come down into my life 
do something inside of me. <laughs> so then I can live what's inside of me out to the world around me. Amen? I thought, man, that's a great message right there. I said, I said, maybe some Christians need to hear that. And so I thought I would preach it to you this morning and, and relate to you the message that what's above us is greater than what's around us. Amen? And what's above us being greater than what's around us wants to come in us and change whatever needs to be changed so that what's in me can come out. Amen? So that I can live it out to the world around me. See, each of us are missionaries this morning. We're preaching the gospel in our daily life. We're walking around talking about the gospel of whatever, okay? But I want you to shift. I want you to shift it, amen? So you can be like Paul who said, I'm preaching my gospel, <laughs> amen? Because it's not just Pastor Everett that should be preaching. It's every one of you. Every single one of you. My victory is in Jesus' name. My victory is in Jesus' name. You know, I've been singing that all week. My victory is in Jesus' name. <laughs> See, maybe you don't believe me. My victory is in Jesus' You know, lots of stuff. Lots of stuff happens. Lots of stuff happens in my life every week. Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. Things I'm happy about, things I'm not happy about. But my victory is in Jesus' name. <laughs> My victories, come on. If understanding why is so important to, to us, that we're willing to sacrifice our entire future trying to answer a question that you'll never answer, why me, God? What have I ever done to deserve even one? You are a treasure in my life, God. I treasure you above the knowledge of the why. God, I give you this now, this life. Speak to me. I will follow you. Help me to follow you. Amen? I'm, oh, I'm almost done. i got to be done. But I, I, I want to talk to you about voices. Just for a second. About voices. In my life, I can listen to me, myself, and I. Amen? I can listen to the voice of experience. The voice of this world's wisdom. I can listen to the voice of peer pressure, like Adam, when Eve bit into the fruit. He used, she used peer pressure to make Adam take a bite. Peer pressure. Adam is not alone. The vo <laughs> what voice did I believe in my life that was wrong? Think about this. What voice did I believe in my life? How do I make sense of these voices? And which one is the voice of truth? The direction, this is the key to understanding which voice to listen to. The direction the voice is taking you is a clue to the origin of that voice. Can I say it again? The direction the voice is leading you is a clue to the origin of the voice that you're listening to. See, when I say the word origin right there, I want to listen to the original voice, the original voice. God is the original voice and he's the destination. He's the origin and the destination. He's the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the author and the finisher. <laughs> Amen? I was created in the image of God. Steve Martin said, you start with something, start with nothing. That's the workaround to something original. 
And God is the original creator. And the reason why I am so creative this morning is because I bear the image. I'm created in his image. I am made in his image. Amen? I could preach about all that. But what's eating at my spirit lately is this thought. What voice is it that matters most to me? It's just been eating at me. Which one am I following? Which voice? The voice I follow is teaching me and showing me and creating me and creating in my life something. Actually, it created in my life the mess, the struggle, <laughs> or the hope, or the dream, or the joy. It comes from voices. And I, I thought about voices and people that heard the voice of God in the Bible. And I have a list, and it was Adam and Eve. Noah, Cain, Abraham, Rebecca. You know, God spoke to Rebecca and said, there's two nations in your belly. <laughs> Jacob and Esau. And Hagar, she heard regarding Ishmael. Jacob wrestled with God. Moses talked face to face with God. Samuel heard the voice when he was a boy in a temple. Remember? And he ran to Eli. And not a word fell from Samuel's mouth. What an example of someone living out what God is speaking in their life. What a great example. Elijah in a cave, remember he had a cave experience where he didn't understand. He was running away from God and he was standing there and there was a whirlwind and a tornado or whatever, and an earthquake and all kinds of fire. And, and, and there was a still small voice that spoke to Elijah. And Jesus, John the Baptist, Right? And the whole crowd that stood with John the Baptist when Jesus was baptized and he came up out of the water and the voice said, boom, from heaven. They thought it was thunder and it said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. God spoke to the whole crowd. And then there was Peter, James, and John at the Mount of Transfiguration. They, they heard the voice of God. And Paul saw a bright light. But if I had to pick one, one person, that I could pray a prayer and ask God, if I could pick one person, who, who would I want to be like in the Bible? If I, if I could just pick one. And so I began to pray this prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would speak to me like you spoke to Moses, face to face, man to man, and that you could begin to reveal to me and impart unto me the knowledge and the understanding and the wisdom necessary to build the kingdom of God. Hear first, Lord, and then hear, Lord. I want, to, I want to hear the voice of God just like Moses did. That's what I want for my life. I want that. And I know to receive that, I have to let go of something else. I said a lot too, you got to let go of something old in order to receive something new. And it's time this morning for new things. Teach me your way. Speak plainly to me, God. Amen? That's a simple prayer right there. But it, that's why I like it, because it's like, just teach me, God. Speak plainly to me, God. I give you my life. Amen? Amen. Amen. God, it's good. It's like, I, it's like I have a timer on myself. It's the same as last week. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I'm not sorry. Amen. Please stand with me. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Stand with me. I just want to pray for you. Amen. Spirit of the living God, Lord, I just pray right now that you come and touch each person in this room under the sound of my voice, Father. I pray that you fill them, Lord, from the top of their head to the sole of their feet, Lord, that you would speak into their mind, Lord, into their heart. And Lord, give them the courage, Lord, to step off the porch, Lord, that they would be big dogs and get off the porch, Lord. And Lord, I just pray right now that, Lord, that you stir up every gift, Lord, that's in this room. Stir us up, God, and help us, Lord, as we walk out these doors, that we would be changed forever, God, that we would have boldness, that we'd have grace, that we'd have mercy, Lord, for not only for those around us, God, what we have received in us, God, we want to give it away. And so, Lord, we give it away right now to those around us in our relationships. Help us to see, God, that our relationships are a representation of who you are in our life, God. Help us to walk that out. Help us to live that in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I just bind every device of the enemy right now. I plead the blood over our lives and I rebuke the devourer. I, I rebuke the, the robber and the thief from our, our doorstep, from our houses, Lord, from our minds, from our hearts and from our lives. And Lord, I pray that you fill us full right now of joy of the Lord. Fill us up, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we give you, we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Woo! God is good. Amen. Can we give him some praise? Amen. God is good. If you need prayer, uh, you can come forward. We, be, we, we will pray with you. We love you guys. Have a great, great day. Uh, we'll see you again soon.